Um, reminding everyone that um, the questions are still open, so either raise your hand with the paper or Twitter. I've been seeing the ones that have been coming. And our next... Right, so we've got, we've got some great questions. Um, and what I thought we'd do... Uh, Mariana, would you mind joining us as well for uh, translation? Thank you. What I thought we'd do is um, read a couple of questions and see which speakers would like to take them on um, as a way to move forward and then see how we're doing and see if we have time left, which I think is very unlikely, that we then can open the mic to you before we go for our alcohol-infused uh, silent disco. Yeah, the cachaça that is there, so no one forgets. So, first one. How is all this digital participatory, I guess, stuff, influencing film? We talk a lot about events, but what about how it affects the arts discipline, which is 100% based on moving image? That's the one. And let's have this other one on a nicer piece of paper. What do artists and game designers need to understand about each other's culture and time scales to collaborate better? Okay, so who would like to take the first one? Uh, we've funded, uh, one of the projects we funded is uh, Coney with Film London. Um, they're trying to create a digital model that will enable independent filmmakers uh, and commercial filmmakers to monetize extras from the filmmaking process. So um, you can access, it's going to be a pay-per-view model, I think. I can't... Uh, explain it very well because I've got notes in front of me and we've got 52 projects on the go so there's a lot to remember um, but they are looking at how they can monetize um, added extras so um, you know you normally when you buy a DVD you get the little interviews with people or the director's commentary or um, clips outtakes that kind of thing they want to see if they can create content that will enable them to generate income from it um, during the process of filming so they can generate income while they're trying to make a film but also after the film has been made as well um, that's an interesting uh, concept for the film industry um, and for independent filmmakers I guess more more importantly who maybe have less access to uh, DVD sales, etc. Um, that's one thing. I just um, came off, the last project I worked on was the Encounters um, Short Film and Animation Festival. I directed their 20th anniversary, which finished last week. And, um, and one of the um, interesting things that I found in uh, having moved into the, the film sector from working in digital for a really long time, was actually this kind of um, the challenge of the challenge of participation and the challenge and the challenge of actually um, somebody messing around with the work, <laughs> you know, that the kind of like the co the co creation of, of storytelling. And I don't know if it'd be interesting to hear. You know, they have a word for it. It's called transmedia. You know, and in my world, it would be called media art or digital work. Or and there's a whole different language, I think, yeah, coming round to explain um, those different forms of cinema that are split across film industry, new media, yeah, theatre, et cetera, et cetera. I think we, uh, we see um, this as an industry, but children, uh, they see it in another way. They see it as another language. As we write, they see they, their self expressing through this. So we have to change our mindset to this because they're going to change everything <laughs> in their way to see it. And perhaps what do artists and game designers need to understand about each other's culture and time scales to collaborate better? Um, Bom, a primeira coisa, durante muito tempo, os game designers eles trabalharam com o foco em cima da, da técnica, da ferramenta. So, first of all, uh, for a long time, game designers have worked uh, based on technique, uh, on the technical aspect and the tool. 
isso criou um grande distanciamento entre artistas e, e, e game designers. That has created a huge gap between artists and game designers. Um, eu acho que uh, e ao mesmo tempo uh, do outro lado os artistas uh, uh, não conseguiram de alguma forma participar uh, da uh, da transversalidade que, que tem envolvida dentro do, do, do design de jogos. Uh, and at the same time, I feel artists haven't been able to take part in the transversal aspect that is involved in game design. Uh, então, eu acho que, que, o, que o grande aprendizado é, é conseguir uh, construir um trabalho transversal uh, respeitando o trabalho um do outro e as limitações de, de cada trabalho. So I think the the real uh, learning to be had is to work in parallel while respecting the boundaries of each other's work and be able to work together in that way. Um, sorry, I'm talking about it again from the fund perspective. So we've, we've funded 52 collaborations with uh, technology, arts and um, researchers and there have been a lot of interesting uh, findings from this. Uh, you can tell the projects where there's a real synergy between the partners, they tend to iron out the wrinkles uh, quite early on. Uh, where they haven't got a working relationship, it tends to be more tricky. Um, but it's also, I think it comes down to, and Matt Locke, um, one of the projects we funded was um, a Story Things project. Um, Matt Locke did a talk at our recent event in July and he was saying it's, um, it's time, it's the way people, the rhythms of work is really different for lots of people. So technology partners work very differently to an arts organisation, work very differently to a researcher, and they all have different um, priorities, and it's a case of understanding those and working together to, to meet the different priorities at different times and sort of slightly adjust the way you work, I think. That's the best way. And we have got, Matt Locke did his talk and we videoed it. It's on our website, so if you want to have a look at that, he's talking about that, that issue of rhythm of work being quite a difficult thing. Um, on the subject of time, I know no one talk about time, but I'm bringing it up. Uh, this will be our last question. Um, I chose the question to try and represent more or less uh, most of them. But as we know, there's so much knowledge on the other side of the stage that I get the, soon, the sooner we get to the bar bit, uh, the better. Um, so, but I did have one more, which I think ties a lot of things that we've been talking about today uh, in little groups and as a whole. Um, that might be interesting for us to approach as a, as a closing for this panel, which is how can digital encourage audiences to be more playful? Um, oh, myself. Oh, why not? Um, <laughs> that's what you get. Um, yeah, so maybe as a, as a kind of way to wrap up, um, there's something that Emma brought up which I think cuts through some of the conversations and some of um, the questions about uh, gamers and artists working together. Of course, it implies that there is this camp of gamers and this camp of artists, and we've broken those down early in terms of terms, so we know there's a lot of hybridity going on. But uh, there is a culture of making uh, when something involves uh, technology testing and so on and delivery and a culture of making that is centered on the experience yeah, which is centrally on the audience assuming they want to play and they are the player and and the bridging of that multidisciplinary collaboration is it's very hard work it takes a long time and I guess one of the key factors is acknowledging failure as one of them and we have to <laughs> plug in our project um, it's acknowledging failure and the ability to be able to expose failure, which I think is one of the things that's coming out of the digital R&D. And I was there, one of the first kind of outings, and that was starting to come out. And I think that's a really incredible impact into culture if organizations and artists can be allowed to go, we really fucked it up. Uh, but there's something in that process that became so enlightening that the next time we'll be able to achieve amazing things. So th I think that's one element of mutually um, trust and, and kind of opening of coaches of collaboration. Um, 
what I'd like to say is about the next step. Um, the question that was, how can I encourage audiences to be more playful? And I think maybe one way to do that is about understanding their needs. I, maybe they don't want to be playful, but they want something. And finding a channel for that, finding a way to work around it. So, and, and we've, we've made that shift as an organization. We started making theater, and today we're really not really making anything that we dare call it something because you just know you're going to work in a gallery and then you want to work in the street and because you're following around those needs and partnerships and testing. So, what we're going to do now started as a kind of gig, and then we just deconstructed and said, all right, what if people want to meet and we're here to match and we're looking for gaps and projects? So what if we do that first and work our bits around them? So that's what we're going to experiment next with a bit of alcohol. Um, is, 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 kind of, yes, is, is kind of encouraging matchmaking, uh, which is all, all today has been about and for us as an organization, how can we enhance those tools to make a, a better impact on collaboration across disciplines, across uh, industries. But also, hopefully, something that is also enjoyable, playful, and can let yourself understand something different about yourself and your body and, and your voice. Enough said. Uh, so, can I say a massive thank you to the panel? And a massive thank you to every partner, uh, Mariana for translating, Sebastian, Will, uh, really everyone. It's been an amazing set of individuals making this happen. It would not be possible with a few people. It had to be a massive team, uh, Toast Temple and so on.